Podcasting, the boisterous part of the fastest game in the world. So strap on your lids and lace them up, Rook. You're listening to the Barn Chirpers Hockey Podcast. Take a lap. Pop it up, boys. Yes. yes. We're back for another episode of the Barn Chirpers. And you know that because you're listening to us. Follow us at the Instagram, the threads at Barn Chirpers Pod. Look on the internets for us at Barn Chirpers Pod. You can find us on the YouTubes and all that. Your boy was on the IR last week, but it's okay. Everything's all good to go. I'm ready to back. I went from day to day to healthy, back to day to day. And now I'm back on the ice starting lineup. And we're here. So if you missed us last week, sorry about it. Uh, <laughs> Things happen, but uh, not much really happened over the last week, truly. I mean, nothing really happened, so you didn't no. miss much, uh, really. But today we're going to talk about uh, the wild card spots that nobody seems to want to <laughs> take. Uh, and then we're going to do uh, a little talk about the bottom 16 teams and whatever else comes up in this next we say 30, but it'll probably be like 45, probably yeah, more than true. likely, mm-hmm, knowing mm-hmm. us. Um, but I mean, hot off the presses, Justin. Um, this is a little bit of somber news and I'm not even a devil's fan, but Jack Hughes hurt again, again. Can this guy stay healthy? Truly? Like, can this guy stay healthy because he's done for the season? I mean, the season was over, let's be real. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but a, a shoulder surgery. So now he's out for the, you know, the rest of, you know, whatever it is, 10 days left. Uh, that's really my question. Can this guy stay healthy? Like, it's, I'm not even a Devils fan, and it's frustrating. Like this is fourth so, major injury, right? It uh, it's so it's twice this year he got injured, but it's the same thing. It's the same injury. He's been playing hurt since he came back, and if you watch the games, you could tell like he there's been no magic on Jack's stick. You look at the the Anaheim game where in the, like literally the last two seconds we get uh, a penalty call and he doesn't even get a shot off. Uh, the other night in Nashville, um, in over or in the shootout, uh, he blows a, a shot in the shootout. He, he 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 just hasn't been himself. He's been playing hurt. So, on one hand, I'm glad he's getting the surgery and not playing the last three meaningless hockey games. Uh, four, if you count last night's game, um, that mean nothing. <laughs> um, and in in all reality. You know, other than the first Toronto game, I mean, look, dude's been playing hurt and still managing to produce, you know, again, not the same Jackie magic, but he's still been managing to produce points. So if you look at the stats, it it doesn't look like he was, but it's clear he was hurt. Um, I'm just glad he's getting the surgery and I'm hoping that he can come back next year. I'm hoping he hits the weight room. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) uh but uh yeah i it is it is a good question can the guy stay healthy uh because when he is like you saw at the beginning of the year he was leading 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 the league in points and there is something magic about jack hughes but bro like i think i think a big part of it is the fact that the I mean, I'm sure we'll get into more of this as the show goes on, but I think this all kind of stems from like what the devil's biggest, one of the biggest problems on in devil's hockey was this year is they don't have size. They don't have fight and people would just come in and, and push Jack, push Nika with no repercussions. These guys would get shoved around. Now Jack didn't get hurt because of some foul play. Of, I don't think. I think he just kind of slipped and and went into the boards and jacked his shoulder up. But still, like it, it, people would come in and, and beat them up, and that's why Nico missed games for a concussion. So I, I joke about him hitting the weight room, but I I, I need him to hit the weight room. I, I'm serious. I need him to hit the weight room. I need him to throw his body around so people don't come at him. Um, so he can stay on the ice. Like you can't produce magic if you're hurt, man. And, uh, we've seen that the last month. It's just, he hasn't been the same. Well, Jack Hughes, you're going to have a whole team around you, but in case you don't Jack Hughes or anybody else out there, uh, maybe you should download the hard work works fitness app because it's in your app store. It's a free download and there's workout plans designed from a full gym, a home gym, 
or no gym at all, the Hard Work Works Fitness app has got it covered. From customized to pre-designed programs, all available in the app, Hard Work Works Fitness takes a meticulous approach to designing the best fit for you. So whether you're a professional athlete like Jack Hughes, or you're just a regular nine-to-fiver like we are, or just getting into a fitness routine, or maybe you're uh, an athlete, a weekend athlete, either way. But what are you waiting for? The Hard Work Works Fitness app delivers. And that's all I got to say about that. And if you sign up today, you can use the code CHIRP and get 10% off of your order. <laughs> money money back. who Or money money off. Who loves that? I love that. Uh, you're also going to get a free nutrition guide if you sign up today or when you're hearing this episode. Just use the code CHIRP. Get 10% off and a free nutrition guide so you can stay on track. <laughs> it's that simple. Decide. Commit. Succeed. And join the hustle today. Hard work. Works fitness app. That's right. The entire devil's locker room needs to do that. <laughs> Devils, uh, if you don't have, uh, you could hire me, uh, New Jersey Devils, or any other professional team. Uh, I will, uh, uh, the Hard Work Works Fitness app will, will design a program for you and get you, uh, put some size on so you can not get beat up every single year uh, in your uh, in your season there. Um, but with, so with that said, uh, all the, these, these places are, are set. These teams are in the playoffs. New York Rangers, Carolina Hurricanes, Boston Bruins, Florida Panthers, Toronto Maple Leafs, Tampa Bay Lightning. Over in the West, Dallas, Colorado, Winnipeg, Vancouver, Edmonton, Nashville. All those teams have clinched a playoff spot. Literally, I it's it's interesting and also at the same time, like, come on. The Metropolitan, the third place in the Metro, and third place in the Pacific, and the second wild card in the West and the second wild card in the East, these teams just can't put it away. And it is exciting to a sense, but to me, truly, I'm so frustrated with it. Like, come on, you guys are terrible. Every single one of you, I'm talking to you, New York Islanders, Washington Capitals, Pittsburgh Penguins, Detroit Red Wings, Philadelphia Flyers, Vegas Golden Knights, and LA Kings. You're all terrible. You suck. You're terrible. (laughs) Clinch a spot already. Like, do you even want to get in? Because it looks like you don't. Truly. You're like, eh, yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll, we'll clear out our schedule. Uh, maybe we won't because we're going to lose this game. I, I mean, first off, just your thoughts on this, like, slug's pace to clinch some playoff spots. It is brutal. The East race is it's brutal. It is. And it has been like the fact that the devs didn't get devs and, and the Sabres to be clear, uh, didn't get mathematically eliminated until last night with three games left. There's no reason those teams should have been in like they they should not have been included in this conversation. Um, the conversation. Yeah, for real. Buffalo has been done since like December. Right. And, but they, they weren't mathematically out, you know what I mean? So they were going out there and they're playing, but um, yeah, like it, it, I mean, your boys seem to like try to do their part, you know, they'll, they'll win and then they'll, drop and then they lost to one. Ottawa. Yeah. Then they lost to Ottawa of all teams. Ottawa. Yeah. Are you well, kidding me? The second worst team in the league and you lost to them. Yeah. Uh, d- to, to that same point, since we're on that, like truly now, and this is blasphemy to say for saying this, I hope Pittsburgh clinches the wild card because they're the only team in the East that's actually been playing their butts off trying mm-hmm. to win. Everybody else has, like, again, been been losing to get in. They've been trying to lose to get in. Like, I, I love the 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 Red Wing story. Obviously, went and saw them this year twice, back to back days. And I love that, love seeing that team on the ice and like, oh my gosh, this is great. Uh, but again, they they lose Dylan Larkin for a few games and they, they can't win anything. They go on a losing streak. Uh, I, I just don't understand the Red Wings. I don't understand the Islanders. I mean, I've never understood the Islanders, to, to be <laughs> fair. Um, but yeah, Pittsburgh's the only team in that wildcard race that's actually been trying to win and playing well. Nadelkovic has been playing out of his mind right now. I think his contract's like 1.1 million. He he's made, he's playing at like a 5 million pace, right? He's earning his spot. Um and he's actually taken over as like the 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 1A guy over Tristan Jari. So um 
I hope Pittsburgh gets in truly. I, I really do. That's blasphemy for me to say that, but I really hope Pittsburgh gets in because Crosby deserves it for the type of year he's having. Um, or excuse me, Crosby has earned it uh, for this team to get in. There's no reason why they should get in other than they've been playing their butts off and I hope they get in. I want to echo that wholeheartedly. Cause like, again, it's blasphemy. I hate it. I, I hate the penguins. I really do. But we talked about this off air before, but Sid got done dirty. Um, they, they dealt away their players and you know, like they left him no one. And it's like, well, I'm still here, man. And uh, so he, Mm -hmm. he strapped on his skates and was like, all right, well, you want to do that to me? I'm going to, I'm going to carry them. I'm going to carry them all the way. And I mean, you know, obviously he's not the only one playing bunting has surprisingly been pretty, pretty solid for them. Um, Letang. Bunting bunting is actually like gotten Malkin out of his dark hole. Malkin has had a terrible year. Absolutely terrible. And it's very like, um, I don't even really know how to how to say what Mulkin's year is like. Mulkin's year has kind of been like I, I don't know. This isn't the the best way to describe it, but I feel Mulkin's year has been like very entitled in the sense of oh well, I don't have anybody to play with. Moo, moo, moo. I don't have anybody on my line to play with, so I'm not gonna play very well. And then you get a guy like Bunting, and all of a sudden he's ignited. Does yeah. that make sense? Right? Yeah. It's, I got you. it's yeah. not. I don't think entitled is exactly the right word, but. It's kind of like that, where essentially, like, I don't have anybody to play with. And then all of a sudden, you give them a solid, you know, forward. And, oh, okay, I'll, I'll put the pucks in the net. Come on, man. Like, come on. Hey, but, come on. <laughs> but, you know, again, like, I I don't really want them to. But, like, they weren't, they're the only team that's playing like they want it. So why shouldn't it be them? Uh, I, and, man, like, I... To that point, like I feel like the East is kind of wide open. There's Carolina, there's Florida, to a lesser extent, New York, and everybody else. I mean, like again, you can't count out Tampa, but like I feel like it's everybody else. Yeah, and I just I mean it's surprising the fall off that the Flyers have had, but I think that also has definitely has to do with Torts. And, uh, you know, I, I like Torts as a coach, but I think over the last few weeks, this fall off with the Flyers, I think you can relate it back to Torts being in that old boys club and it's his way or the highway. And I like that to an extent, but as you can see, like when you just continually dog your players, uh, call them out in the media, uh, scratch your captain multiple times, you're going to lose the room. And I think he, I think he lost the room and the flyers have fallen off and they've fallen out of that third spot in the Metro, which they've held pretty much the entire year. Um, Like the guys are just sick of it. Seemingly what, obviously I'm not in that room, so I don't know, but the boys are just sick of it. Like torts shut F up. Seriously. (laughs) That's kind of how I, how it seems, you know? Um, and it's it's funny in the sense where Torts, this was I think last week, finally came came back uh, in a media scrum or whatever, and he actually like answered questions and was actually like sort of humble, like yeah, I I, uh, I messed up. I don't think he said he messed up, but I don't know if you heard that interview, but he was mm-hmm. very almost apologetic for how he called out his players, and he essentially it was like, and it falls on me, something something along those lines, but. Uh, like trying to backtrack essentially like, well, you messed up towards like you had a playoff team that wasn't supposed to be there because they were still doing well after the trade deadline. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, you know, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, I know we're kind of gone, gone over all over the place. Uh, if, if I was going to give you, okay. So we already kind of talked about the East. We both said that we would love to see Pittsburgh make it just because they're the only ones playing their butts off. Uh, but what about the West? So, LA is in that third spot in the Pacific. Vegas is right behind them with uh, ninety uh, one point off. Um, so that's really the the wild card race in the West is uh, either LA or Vegas because Nashville has that first spot uh, pretty locked up. I mean, I guess technically, uh, let, let me rephrase this. So Nashville is in that first spot with ninety five points. They have three games left. Um, both LA and Vegas have a game in hand 
So LA has 93 points. Vegas has 92 points. Who would you rather see in that second wild card spot to play Dallas, Vegas, or LA? Well, if I want to, preserve, one of those, one of those is going to be in the, in the second spot, probably. If I want to preserve my cup prediction from the beginning of the season, then it's LA because I think Dallas, I think Dallas handles LA pretty easily. Um, for the better hockey, for the better first round matchup, man, give me give me a a disrespected Vegas. Like, give me Vegas with a chip on their shoulder going into the playoffs. I mean, does it mean anything? I don't know. Like the, the way they've been playing hockey lately, who knows? But like, based on everything we saw last year, based on the talent that they have, Dallas Vegas is like a really interesting matchup to me. That could easily go seven. Yeah, it really could. Um, that would be that would be interesting to to see that for sure, uh, especially if Vegas actually pulls their head out of their butt um, and, and plays some hockey because they haven't played very great hockey as of late. It's 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 surprising to see. Well, not surprising where they're at now, but just the sort of downfall that they've had over the last couple of months, um, falling back down down into a wild card spot. Even um, all right, so. Final prediction, who locks up third of the Metro? Who gets the second wild card spot in the East? Uh, I mean, we kind of already talked about our wants, but who actually locks it up in your mind? Third place in so Metro, second wild card. The way the way the aisle is playing, um, and I know they're, they're going out and g- getting a lot of uh, loser points, but I, that's that's get doing the trick, like it's it's doing it for them. So my my gut says they hold on for dear life in that that third spot, and Pittsburgh grabs the wild card. That's what my gut says. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm just looking at the stand of the last streak. Pittsburgh is six one and three. The aisle is seven and three. So yeah, like you said, I mean the aisle, they just keep picking up those one pointers in overtime. Uh, again, fifteen overtime losses so 15 points from losing in overtime mm-hmm. um and they've kind of again the door was open because nobody wants to win and all of a sudden they're like oh, okay we'll pick up a point here we'll pick up a point we'll pick up a point all of a sudden they're in third so yeah i would i hate it because obviously i hate the aisle i've said that for a long time yeah i think you're probably right they are going to take third in the metro um and same i, I think I think Pittsburgh is going to get it done and get into that second wild card spot. And I hope they do. I, like I said, it's blasphemy, but I hope they do. Um, you, you know, you know what? Let's see. Cause they have four of oh, both teams have four games left. So a possibility of eight points. So with four games, New York will probably go to overtime, at least three of those. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going out on a limb and I'm saying Pittsburgh ends up in the third spot in the metro and the aisle is going to be in the second wild card spot again that's what oh, I'm going with. that's my prediction yeah yeah i like it all right so what about the west like i said uh third place in the pacific is up for grabs right now la kings have uh, four games left and they have 93 points vegas has five games left at 92 points la is in that third spot in the pacific Vegas is in the second spot in the wild card. And I will say St. Louis with four games left has 87 points. So there's eight points up for grabs. They very well could move into that wild card spot potentially. But so what's your pick who takes third in the Pacific and who gets the wild card spot? So let me, let me address the the blues uh, discussion first, since you brought them up. No way. (laughs) Like, I, I mean, yeah, mathematically they're not out yet, but it, to me the Blues feel very much like Devil's West, where like you've got nothing consistent from them all year. So I, I've seen nothing from the Blues that suggests that they can not only because they probably have to get all four to like secure the spot. Like, sure, the they points, they would have to. Yes, they would one hundred percent have to. And I just I don't see that happening. Like they're 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 not that streaky, you know what I mean? Like they're a chippy. We'll take two here, you know, lose one, take another one. Um, 
I, look, I hate doing it because it, it's very chalky to everything we've said all year and everything we've said since we started this show. But until Vegas proves me or until Vegas does me wrong, <laughs> I can't pick against them. Uh, they're still Vegas Golden Knights. They're still the defending cup champions. And they're still, to me, the better team than Los Angeles. So my gut says with five games left, they get enough points to surpass L.A. And L.A. ends up in that uh, second wild card. Yeah, I, I had to bring up the Blues just because they are right there. Technically, they could still get in. But, um, man, they. what's funny, a funny stat is St. Louis Blues is the only team not to beat the San Jose Sharks this year. <laughs> They're the only team not to do that. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I had to bring that up because they technically could get in, but uh, I don't see them getting in either. Um, I, I think Vegas is going to uh, be able to get back up to the third spot in the Pacific, and LA will be in that second wild card spot. Um, I just think uh, with five games left, um, you know, they're going to do whatever they got to do to uh, get that better seating. Cause I don't think they want to play Dallas. I think they'd rather play Edmonton for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Edmonton has a better opportunity of going cold in the playoffs. A la Stuart Skinner, even though he's played great, but when, when, when the push comes to shove, uh, you don't really know what you're going to get as the, for the Oilers. Truly. I mean, we've seen that years and years and years. So, um, okay, cool. So let's move on here. We're going to talk about the bottom 16 teams and how we're going to do this. Basically, like, I'm just going to name the team. Um, if you have if you have anything really hard input to put into it, by all means, um, a lot of these, I think we both don't necessarily know what, what is upcoming in, in their farm system and the AHL. But so if you have anything, obviously put it in. But basically, I'll give you the give you the team and then give you a range um, and you can either agree or say no to when they will be a playoff team, not a contender, but even just make the playoffs. Does that, does that make sense? That's, that's helpful. Gotcha. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's start with the bottom of the barrel, the, the 32nd worst, the worst team in the league, the San Jose sharks. Um, technically, I mean, you would think that they would get the number one overall pick in the draft lottery, but uh, we know how that's going to go. So mm -hmm. <laughs> the San Jose Sharks, uh, let's say five to 10 years before they're a playoff contender. Yeah, that's about right. I mean, unfortunately for them, that's about right. Uh, they had some surprising heart uh, uh, for a team as bad as they were. Like if you watch any Sharks game, they played hard and they uh, it was surprising to, to see – decent hockey come out of that club but yeah it's it, before they're able to even sniff the playoffs yeah five to ten that's about right yeah so i mean you know getting celebrini would be a huge uptick to their team but we all know that's not going to happen he's going to chicago like 100 mm -hmm. there's there's he, there's no doubt that chicago is going to get the first overall again no doubt about but he, it but even if they do land them, right? Let's let's say something happens in it and it doesn't get rigged to Chicago. Um, he lands in San Jose. That's still probably there's still. I mean, at best, three to five, right? Like, uh, oh, at least, yeah. I, I I I'm firmly even if they get Celebrini, I still firmly think. Okay, if they don't get Celebrini, ten years before they're a playoff contender, easily, easily. If they get Celebrini, I'm still saying like five to seven. Yeah. So like, cause there's nobody there right now, literally mm -hmm. nobody. And they're going to have to try to get some vets to come to San Jose. Like, I mean, I get it. It's California, but that's still going to be real tough, real, real tough. Uh, okay. So move on to the Blackhawks 31st team in the league. Uh, I mean, you know, we, they got Bedard. Um, they hey, brought Taylor Hall over. They re-signed Nick Foligno. Um, same thing. They're going to have to get some veterans on that team. They're going to have to get some guys that aren't AHL guys on the team. So I'm going to say playoff contender. Uh, I'm going to give that five to seven or I'm going to say three to seven, three to seven. Yeah. They, it, it feels like if, if they nothing, no disrespect to Peter Mrazek, <laughs> but like that no, guy he's is played not, great this year, actually. I, absolutely. For, for what they, 
for what that team is, he's been pretty good for them. Um, but they probably they probably need a world class tendy, and that doesn't even address any of their other problems. So yeah, like right. that's right. <laughs> I feel like five uh, seems about right. Um, yeah, f- I'm gonna go with five. Yeah, that seems about right. Yeah, that's what seven. I was gonna say. I, I would say at least minimum five. That's why I brought yeah five for sure. Easily five. I think. I think in th- three seasons they could probably be sniffing, like on mm-hmm. the outskirts, be that like St. Louis Blues team, maybe that Minnesota Wild team, just on the outskirts, right? Um, mm-hmm. But it's still going to be a- at least at least five until they're a legit contender to even make the playoffs. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anaheim Ducks. Uh, you know what? I'm saying ten years, regardless for the Anaheim Ducks, ten to fifteen years. <laughs> God, I I hate that because I want the Ducks. I, I, I do too. I just well. do. I don't don't know what they're doing. Like, what no. are you doing legitimately? What are you doing? Uh, so I, I just don't see a future in this in this team. No, me neither. And I, you know, we talked about it in the. I love their off season. They bring in Kaloran. They bring in Goody. They they hold on to Gibby. Like it, they gave Zegras the bag. Who like he's been on and off the ice, and even when he's been on the ice, hasn't been great. Um, to echo your point, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Um, so even when they do things right, it's still not right. So yeah, 10, <laughs> 10 seems, 10 seems to be legit, unfortunately for them. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think, you know, like those guys that you said that they brought in and I loved those moves too. Um, but a guy like Frank, the tank for Toronto, who had a great season, especially early on, um, you know, he's coming up, He's going to be, I think, a UFA next season. So, like, you not only have to continue – if you want to keep him around, which you should, I mean, you have to pay him. You have to pay these other guys to come in. Like, I just feel there's there's nobody really locked up. I mean, yeah, Zegris is here for the next few years, but he hasn't done anything. So, it's it's going to be a tough run. I mean, they got Mitch Goff. He seems like a promising kid. Uh, but you, well, you're going to build the team around him? Oh, mm-hmm. That's tough. Okay, moving up the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now, I do know a little bit because I've listened to Frank Saravalli talk about the Blue Jackets. They do have a ton of prospects that are not necessarily NHL ready yet, but they got guys in the pipeline that could very well be great NHLers. I mean, they already have uh, Razzle Dazzle, Kent Johnson. They got Chinnikov. They got Marchenko. Um, they got... Uh, uh, of something of, um, shoot, I'm forgetting his name right now, but they got Chinnikov? guys. So uh, Chino, did I say Chinnikov? Yeah. Chinnikov, no. Marchenko, and there's another of, um, but I just can't, I'm <laughs> losing it right now. Anyway, it's another Russian guy. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so for Columbus, I do think that they potentially could, if now this lies on getting a good GM in place, um, and I think probably a different coach because I don't think um, what's his what's his name is isn't doing it. Uh, Pavel, uh, what, whatever. Anyway, um, point being, I'm going to say at least five years, uh, but I do think in five years they could be a playoff team. Yeah, that sounds right. I you know I'd I'd like to lean the other way. Just again, like like I said about the Sharks, like you watch Blue Jackets games and they play tough. And they they played tough teams really hard, and they were rarely. I mean, they of course got blown out sometimes, but like there there was games you'd you'd watch that you'd assume they were going to get blown out, and they they didn't. They just went out and played hard. Uh, I, I, they're they're missing some pieces, and but to your point, if they've got the dudes coming up, then I feel like. I feel like five seems. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. I want to go. I, I want to go three, but five seems Same. right. Same, yeah. Uh, the next team up. This one is hard. This one's really tough. It's the Arizona Coyotes. Um, well, here's the thing with that. Um, and I was mm. going to save this for the empty net, but this tracks right now. Frank Saravalli reported today, four hours ago, that NHL is drafting two schedule versions for next season one with the Yotes in Arizona, another one with the relocated franchise playing in Salt Lake City. He says, fluid situation, lots of moving parts, details on dual paths, and potential transaction, end quote. 
So with that said, um, I mean, just, just that in general, uh, yeah, it's Arizona and like, Hey, great. I get to play. I get to live in the desert every single day, <laughs> but getting guys to sign and go there, I think is just going to be really, really difficult because you don't know what the future of this franchise is. So like, are you going to pack up your entire family or pack up yourself even and move across the country, let's say, or just move there when you don't know what the, what the future holds? Like, so, you know, I wish it was less, but I'm given, I'm given a hard 10 years on this team and they're probably not going to be in Arizona on that time, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I mean, man, <laughs> the, it, this season, yeah, you can go back and listen to, you know, our off season talking about Arizona. Like we started this show chirping Arizona mm-hmm. real mm-hmm. hard. And it feels like we're about to be going back to that because they broke our hearts this year. Um, we loved both of us loved their off season. And then at the beginning of the season, they, they played hard and it looked like maybe they could save this thing. But to your point, like who's, who's going to go there? Like, I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but who's going to go there? And I, it's just, it, it's too much, too much out in the open, too much question marks. My heart wants to say more like seven, but yeah, the 10's probably probably right. I mean, I I just don't see who's going there. And then within that time, if they go to Salt Lake, which it's looking more and more like is gonna happen, who's going there? So well, and to that point, I I don't think they have anybody on the back end signed for next year right now. I'm pretty oh, sure they, maybe, yeah, because I think Jersey was just a one year deal. So I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure they don't have anybody signed on the back end for next season. Yikes. And it's the end of the year right now. So mm-hmm. that's tough. Um, props to them. I think I, I said they were going to win 45 games this year. Um, I think I said 40 or 45. I'll have to look back at the actual notes, but they got 33. Um, and with four games left, they could very well get 37 wins. So I do think that's a pretty successful season uh, of what we thought they could do. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's the Yotes. So moving on. <laughs> uh, next up, the Montreal Canadiens sitting in essentially the 27th out of 32nd place in the league. I, uh, you know, I wish it was a lot sooner, but I'm saying – easily five to seven for this squad i think mm. i wish i wish it was more like two to two to four but mm-hmm. i think that's upwards of seven years uh to get all the guys in the pipeline um ready to play in the nhl though slavkovsky who they drafted i mean he just had a hat trick yesterday i mean they put a nine spot up in the flyers yeah. um <laughs> and if they could get kirby doc healthy another guy that can't seem to stay healthy um this team is promising, uh, you know, Cole Caulfield, Nick Suzuki. Uh, now that guy, Slavkovsky. Um, and then who's the other guy they drafted? Uh, Reinbach, Reinbacher um, mm-hmm. on the back end. So a lot of promise, but uh, I mean, I still don't see very much in their future <laughs> for another at least five to seven. Uh I watched a lot of Montreal Canadiens hockey this year. I, I, I loved watching the Habs. Um, just because we've been so locked up, I'm going the other way. <laughs> uh, five, five seems right. Um, and like you, I actually kind of want to go sooner. Um, but at, after watching them so much, like, I feel like, I mean, obviously they're, they're I don't I don't even know Jack Edge on 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 D, uh, but they locked up Mountain Ball this year. They um, Primo has looked decent in the one A spot. Ah, God, my gut is saying three. <laughs> my gut is saying I would, three. Years. I would love to see it. I'd love to see it. Um, but maybe that maybe that is just not homerism, but just proximity after watching them so much. Uh, maybe that's just what it is. Montreal as a playoff team and a contender is good for hockey. That's yeah. one of the teams that, that is good for hockey. 
Uh, moving on, this team just really upset both of us this year. It's the Ottawa Senators, and, and truly, I'm. I don't. I don't know if this team will ever be a playoff contender again. Truly, not with this squad. Um, I, I we're hopeful. We were hopeful for them, but dude, um, this was an awful, terrible year. That they don't. Ugh, ugh, I just. Ugh, ugh, that's that's the thought that I have with the Ottawa Senators. So like. By all means, take it away. I don't have a number for this because I don't think they're ever making the playoffs again at this point. Truly, I, Man, I, I like, truly feel that way. Like watching watching them was. I watched, I watched for sure th- two full games, and I tuned in to probably three other ones. And the amount of time that I spent watching the Ottawa Senators was such a complete waste of my time. It was not good at all. Well, I I truly don't I truly don't understand that team at all because they played Buffalo what two weeks ago and they they chased six K within five minutes they they put six up on them and it's like well where's that been all year uh, and then they right. run down the Devils like they they've had a decent stretch these last two weeks but where's that been all season and you look at the again. You can't play hockey on paper, but you look at this team on paper, they should be sniffing the playoffs at least. There's the, the, there's no reason they should be this bad. I don't understand it, um, but they are. And I can't continue to get bit this way. Like I, we keep, we keep going. It's, it's kind of like the way we approach Edmonton in the playoffs. I'll believe it when I see it with Ottawa. I'll believe that yep. they're actual contenders yep. when I see it. I'm no longer putting my chips in Ottawa. So look, man, like I, I, I it feels semi hyperbolic. You saying I, you don't that you don't think they'll ever make it again? But I mean, it does the way they've played and the way this team has been. It does seem at least a minimum like Anaheim ten. Yeah, yeah, good call. I just didn't want to be the one to say it again because I've been saying kind of the same thing. But truly, man, like I just I, I wish it was better, but it's just not clearly. Um, the, a lot needs to change more than just on the ice. I mean, I know they a new owner and a new GM, uh, but I don't know. I just I'm not sure that anybody can get out of anybody else's way to get things done that need to get done is kind of how I see it. So hopefully that's hopefully it's um, not the case. I I don't know where else to put this, so I'll tag this here, but it's also just a weird organization, man. Like, so this is, this is the same, same team where like Greg has the, the open net slap shot, right? Like a couple weeks Mm -hmm. ago, however long ago that was. And then uh, just last week, Nico Heischer at the end of the devil's game, like he's breaking away on an empty net, the whistle at the last second, he pulls up and the, the puck goes in like it, it glides in. And mm-hmm. Brady Kachuk loses his freaking mind. It's like like well, a little baby. Yes. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Maybe it's if you weird. played with that intensity the rest of the game, you maybe would have won. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Moving on to another Canadian team, the Calgary Flames. Um, even though they kind of they got rid of everybody this year, but really, I think this is promising because they can truly start. I don't even necessarily know that they need to fully rebuild, maybe just a retooling. Um, we know Markstrom is probably going to be gone uh, since, you know, there was that no trade, uh, the trade that fell through. Uh, that's kind of an awkward thing to still be there. I, I think I said that on the show before, but then again, maybe he sticks around to uh, kind of uh, bring Wolf in uh, to the league and give Wolf the, uh, uh, you know, some, some, mentoring to get him ready to be a full-time NHL goalie. Who knows? But I do think that this team actually has a, excuse me, a quicker chance of turning things around. I'm going to say two to four for this team. I think they can, because they're still kind of in it, sort of, um, until they got rid of everybody. They were still sniffing the uh, playoff spot. So I'm going to say two to four for the Calgary Flames. Yeah, three three was my instinct, so I'm going to stick with that. Three is my instinct. Um if you watched any Calgary Flames hockey, like they'd have these moments where they looked like they should. Um, but yeah, like it, I, I don't think they're that far off. I, you know, a couple pieces, you know, we'll see what happens with this Markstrom. The Markstrom deal could be, could end up being like a key to turning them around faster. Like maybe they get the pieces that 
You know what I mean? So could be. Uh, to me, it, it does feel like they're they're only like three seasons out from from being in the playoffs. So three is my answer. Long winded. <laughs> That's fine. Moving on to another team that broke our hearts this year, and I'm just kind of fed up with them is the Buffalo Sabers. Once again, the H, um, man. <laughs> they were supposed to have a better season, and they had a worse season. And they've mm-hmm. had all the same guys on that squad. They've even added some pieces, um, mm-hmm. and they were worse. So that, to me, is like – and here's here's the thing. They're in that kind of middle ground bad team where they're still not going to have a really high draft pick. They're going to have a mid draft pick, and that's not really going to do you any good either, truly. No. I mean, that mid draft pick, what's it going to turn into? Maybe an NHL player? So it's kind of like you have a lot of the you have the core locked up Thompson, Darlene, Power. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Cousins, yep. Yeah. Um, you got the core locked up, but I think there's also you. You may have to send one of those guys away to get some pieces in return because you need a jump start. I think so. I think this team like. I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt and say three, but really I'm leaning more towards five unless they do that where I think it's great that you have the core locked up, but maybe you got to get rid of one to get some pieces back so you can actually jumpstart this process to either be worse and get a, get some better draft positioning or finally be better and, and move up in the standings. Does that make sense? Totally. I, you know, they're, they're sort of in purgatory, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's damned if you do damned if you don't. And I, I mean, the, there there's positives, obviously six K looks like he got the seasoning he needed. I mean, that goalie core, all three of them looked terrible at the beginning of the year. Six uh, K Levi and Comrie looked awful. Six K locked in and he's looked pretty good. Uh, Levi's looked pretty decent, and I know Comrie's come on in, in in relief here and there. So, like, the goalie tandem seems to have worked itself out. But what about the rest of the guys? Um, I, yeah, you hate to see. I mean, we, when we were doing the show, Middlestat got traded. We didn't not we didn't see that coming. And I wouldn't right. have called him yeah. core. Obviously, they didn't view him as core. But some somebody else is probably going to have to go, and you hate to see it because it felt like this was the year they were going to step into the playoffs and the fact that they aren't, mm, I'm going to go a little more optimistic than your five, uh, three. Um, but I, I give that reluctantly. <laughs> um, it, it, I think your five is probably right. And I think I just like the players too much and that's why I'm going lenient on them. So three. I mean, I, I I hope to be wrong. I truly hope to be wrong because I, I I love seeing the Sabers be good. Um, so actually, the Sabers, your team, the New Jersey Devils, and the Seattle Kraken all have the same points, seventy nine. Um, I'm going to go to Seattle here first because uh, I imagine you'll have a little bit more to say about the Devils. Um, Seattle, uh, you know, obviously they had a great a great turnaround season last year, um, which was really above and beyond where they're really at so if we're taking the first year and this year is a true progression of where they're at um, obviously in the first year they were way further down the standings I, I just Seattle again they're kind of in that purgatory where they're not bad enough to get a really good draft pick and they're not good enough to uh, necessarily have people want to go there Maybe it is. I guess maybe it is kind of turning into a destination that people want to go. Um, I just think the same thing that I kind of said for for Buffalo. I think they have to give up some of their guys like a Larson um, and maybe even like Yanni Gord, um, although he's not really that young. Like a Larson and I'm trying to think. Um, oh, man, I have his name in my head, but it. I'm just going to keep stalling uh, otherwise. <laughs> but anyway, like give up a Larson, give up maybe another piece to get some guys, maybe a veteran, a more veteran presence, some guys that can score, some guys that can play defense. I, I'm not really sure, but I just think I, I like that they've slow played this. Uh, I've said that before, but 
I feel like if you're really going to make a jump, you got to make a move. And I feel like that's where the same thing kind of like I said for Buffalo. So for this Seattle team, for them to get back, uh, I'm saying three at least. And unless they make a move like that, could be sooner. But I just think they're in that purgatory again. They, they need to make a move. Yeah. I Again, I, I hate just echoing what you're saying, but like the, it feels right. Like I think – I think this year feels like a disappointment to them just because they had a great year last year. And it's hard, it's hard to hold that against them because they're still a new team. So the fact that we had such high hopes for them speaks well to the franchise in and of itself, like how it's run. But yeah, like I, I, there, there are a couple players away from, I don't see them. I don't see them stepping back next year, but I also don't see this roster stepping forward next year either. So that's fair. Yeah. Three, three. Yeah. Three seems right. (laughs) All right. Your New Jersey devils. I'm sure you have a a lot to say about that. I I mean, I'm just going to be real from, you know, again, they kind of overshot last season. Obviously the injury to Dougie Hamilton doesn't help. Um, but we talked about this on a show before, you know, uh, you're, the GM didn't foresee the back end problems. I mean, he didn't, he didn't bring anybody in to really help um, Dougie. Like you have a, a back end that's all young guys and like, just, okay, you guys are going to do it. Cause you did okay in the play. Like you got to bring, got to bring some people in uh, to help out. I'm, I'm going to say four years for the devils. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's true, but I get, I totally hear what you're saying. Um, I came to peace with this season being a disappointment because they overshot last year. Um, I, I don't think anybody could have seen Siegs and Marino taking as many steps back as they did this year. Like, Siegs has been terrible and I hate to say it because I love the guy, but he's been awful. And I think between those two and ham, you think you have, you have the defensive leadership. You have, that's half the core. That's, that's half of the, the six. Um, you think that's enough. Um, you don't see uh, Nemitz doesn't see the ice if ham doesn't go down. So, mm-hmm. Um, to me, from seeing them play, and especially after Lindy gets fired and s- seeing Timo come into form, uh, I feel like we're one veteran D-man away and um, a, a good, like, elite goalie, um, like a true starting goalie. Because th- you look at how much better they've played with Jake Allen and Capo Kakinen. I You know what That's I mean? Like, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, I mean, if if you had fired Lindy twenty games earlier and brought in Jake Allen twenty games earlier, I mean, this we could be having a different conversation right now. Truly, yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing. So, you, you Devils Reddit, oh, why didn't they bring in Jake Allen earlier? Because he had a no trade clause, and New Jersey was on it. Like, what what can you do? Um, True. At, yep. Apparently, Fitzy was on on the phone trying to make a a tendy deal, basically all season. I, you know, I can make excuses. You know, a mile long. I think VTech was playing hurt. Firstly, I, the fact that he's still not seen the ice in San Jose tells me there was something going on there. Um, but you know that it, it, to me, they're, they're back in the playoffs next year. Now, I don't know if that is just a true homerism, but like <laughs> every, it, it, it really depends. It really depends. They need a good uh, head coach hire. And, you know, if they mu- if they muff the hire, if, if Fitzy muffs the head coach hire, then I'm with you and it's probably four years. Um, but if they get a, a good coach in, I could see th- I see them just on talent alone. And again, obviously, you know, all these caveats, they need a D man. They need a veteran D man. Um, and you need that other tendy. Like Jake Allen can't take the majority of the games. He's got to be, he's got to be your one B. Um, 
if all those things happen, they're they're back in, right back in the playoffs next year. I don't think they're cup contenders, but I think they're back in. Uh, if one of those things doesn't happen, then it probably is at minimum two seasons, probably more like you said, three to four. There's plenty of coaches on the market that they could hire. Uh, I think a Jay Woodcroft on that team would probably be a solid, solid grab uh, as a head coach. Uh, moving on, we kind of already talked about on the Philadelphia Flyers now out of a playoff spot. They're 21st in the league. I mean, uh, it, it, initially, let's see, uh, what did I say last season? 2026, 20, 27. Is that what mm-hmm. I told Corey? I forget what I chirped yeah. at him. So mm-hmm. I'm still, I'm still standing by that. I mean, it's surprising that they did so well this year. Um, by so here's the thing. I'll just say I'll say this because I'm just sticking by 26, 27 seasons when they're actually going to get in. Uh, and I said it before too. Torts is the coach that kind of gets the general foundation laid on this team, but he's not going to be the one that gets him in the playoffs. I don't think, uh, especially after how we've seen this downfall over the last month because of how he coaches. Again, going back to the old boys club needs to GTFU. You know what I mean? Um, or mm-hmm. GTFO. Um, because um, it just it doesn't work anymore. It's not it's not the world or the league that we live in or we play in anymore. Whether you like it or you're not or you don't like it, it's not the place that we live in in 2024. That type of coaching for an entire year just doesn't work. Um, it's good at times to get you motivated, but it just doesn't work. Um, so anyway, I'm sticking by that 26, 27. So three, three, two, three seasons, three seasons. I want to I want to stick with you here, but I feel like they've they've really done a detriment to themselves this year. It, it uh, Corey said when we asked him, it's playoffs or bust, right? Like not because not because you know they're on you know the, the feeder to the fire, but because they need the draft picks, the, like yep. they need the people, and they just played really well, and now they're fading fast. Um, to your point, Torts seems to have lost the room. Um, so I think I want to, again, give them the benefit of the doubt because they were able to do this with the club that they have the present. So like three, I think is the low end, but I feel like it's more like five for them. I hope I'm wrong. This is like you, I hope, I hope I'm wrong. Um, I, the Flyers have been a tremendous story this year, but I just don't know that they did any favors for the club. Uh, breaking news, Justin, from Frank Zaravalli. S- quote, sources tell Daily Faceoff, NHL, Arizona Coyotes, and Smith Entertainment Group have made significant progress on the framework of an agreement to relocate Yotes to Salt Lake City, Utah. NHL memo updated governors today. Not done. Many layers and lawyers. Much work to do. Uh, but signs point to Salt Lake City. I better get you a heard it here first. Sweater. Yeah, I better get a coyote sweater you, fast. <laughs> you heard it here first, exactly. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, again, kind of blasphemy. I would like to see this team be better uh, sooner, but I. Just don't see it happening. I think there's a lot, a lot more work to be done. Speaking of a lot more work to be done, the Minnesota Wild, Justin, um, mm. in that purgatory 20th spot. Uh, well, let's see. They got one more season with all that cap hell. So in two seasons, they're going to actually have some money to work with. So, but I'm going to say three seasons because I would love to see once they're out of cap hell that they just go scorched earth and they win the central but I still think that it's going to take a little time for the pieces that they bring in. Um, you know, you bring in pieces, they don't always mesh well right away. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say three seasons, Minnesota wild playoff contenders. Just to, just to go, go with a different number. I'm going to say two, but I think you're right. I think it's three. I, it, the fact that they've been able to make the playoffs so many times, um, they don't do well in the playoffs, but they still get there and they they've played well. The man, the the fact that they were able to turn this season around and be even in the discussion, even though it was o- only for a brief manner, says something. So, 
I think they're not that far off. It's just we know that they can't do anything next year. So uh, they're going to have the same mm-hmm. club going into next year, and I don't think that does them any favors. So you're looking at, at minimum two. I think it's more likely three, but my heart says two, so I'm going with two. And I just feel bad for Flower. I wish he would have said he wanted to get traded. I mean, I yeah. I admire him because he was like, no, I'm sticking with this team because we're gonna. I, I want to do it with this team. But I feel bad for Flower that he's his streak is ended because he's yeah, not man. making the playoffs this year. So that's I wish we could. I wish we could have gotten Flower. I would have definitely taken Flower this season. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, we got three more teams to talk about. This first one's Detroit Red Wings. I mean. This was the last year of the three years where I said three years ago that they were going to make the playoffs, mm-hmm. and they're right there. Uh, they just – obviously, they couldn't pull the trigger. So I don't really know what the future holds, truly. I don't think Patty Kane's going to stick around. I think he's going to be somewhere else next year, probably. So um, I guess three – because I said three years when they had Nadelkovic, um before they had to bring at um, – you know, I guess I'll just say three more years. Three more, three more years, three more years <laughs> until well, Detroit's again, actually in playoff contention. This feels like this feels like very much like the the Buffalo conversation, where both of us had them firmly in a playoff position this year. And it, it, again, like I don't think they're they're not mathematically out yet, right? Like they're they're st- still technically in it. No, they they, they still could. Yeah, they still could. <laughs> But man, like they've shown nothing (laughs) like they've shown nothing to say that we want it. And if you don't do that, then what do you do in the playoffs anyway? So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt just because they were they were in the conversation. This I'm going to say that they're they're in the playoffs next year. Oh, that's going to hurt. That's going to (laughs) sting. Um, I mean, the last two, I mean, really Detroit was technically a playoff contender right now too, but we already talked about the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, we're both calling that they're going to make it this year. So we don't really have much else to say. Um, if I guess if they don't, um, I hope they don't try to run it back with the same squad next year because oof, didn't work very well, did it? Uh, no. And I feel bad for Sid. No. I hope Sid goes somewhere else. Truly. Yeah, he, he deserves, he deserves a good cup contending team. And then uh, my team, Washington Capitals, technically they're still sniffing there, but dude, um, I, uh, uh, give me is a this, full rebuild. I was going to say, is this is this the same uh, detriment that Philly caused themselves? Like, is this, did they really just shoot themselves in the foot, you think? Yeah, well, they didn't do themselves any favors, that's for sure. Um, you know, so you're going to get a, a mid-draft pick for being – mid a mid team right um they have a lot of guys i mean literally this team that's been uh, that is in this position is essentially an ahl team i mean 75 percent of the guys are just called up from the hershey bears and they've done pretty well for it so they have a lot of good guys in, in the system hershey wins the ahl uh championship the calder cup every single year pretty much so they have the guys um I mean, obviously, Ovi is now, I want to say, 48 goals away from breaking Wayne Gretzky's record. Uh, Since we're right up against it, I'll just say this piece of news. He hit his 18th 30-goal season, uh, which is the most in NHL history. So stick taps to Ovi. Um, But, yeah, I mean, if they don't make it this year, which I hope they don't, truly, because they'll just get embarrassed, um, you know, easily five five years, probably more like seven, five to seven for the Capitals to truly be a contender again. I think. I hope for your sake that they that they don't make it and that they just deal off whatever pieces they can and keep Ovi, obviously. Uh, but you well, know, yeah, he's deal not going everybody. Anywhere. Yeah, but like, try to get pieces and you know. Ovi can get those 48 goals and then he can ride off into the sunset and then you can just start the rebuild next year with Ovi as being the only piece. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with it. And keep Chucky too, because he's a better goaltender than Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, it's uh, it's well, it took a full hour <laughs> longer than we well we knew that always was going to happen. Yep. So we got to uh, got to head out of here. But we'll we'll be back next week for more barn chirpers. Uh, until then, keep your head up, play to the whistle, stick taps, and sell these boys. Clap it up.
private up. 